Today we're going to be turning this extra piece of uh, aileron stock into an aileron uh, end cap. I will note that uh, in my last video um, I mentioned that the bends on the end cap that came with the kit were a little bit off. This one actually fits much better than that one did so I may end up just using this in the end but I thought it would be worthwhile to talk about how to turn just a piece of stock uh, aluminum into one of these end caps. Um, and. I don't know, maybe you'll learn something from it. Maybe I'll learn something from it. Um, so here we go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, trim off a piece of this aluminum uh, that will be about the same size uh, as this. I'm gonna make sure I cut off a big enough piece of it that uh, you know I have a bit of room around it. Um, and then bend up one side of it, the shorter end here, um, so that I have a way to get it lined up with this uh, angle right here. It actually needs to fit down inside of this um, and that'll keep it straight in the direction that I need it to be and then I can actually trace down the edges here on the plate um, so that we can uh, get those angles exactly right as well. Alright, so I've measured this uh, seam right here, this bend. Um, it's about a half an inch wide. I'm going to go ahead and mark that on this plate now, and uh, that's going to be my bend bend mark. Um, it is slightly larger than a half an inch. I'm actually going to measure off three quarters of an inch just to give myself a little extra uh, space in case I need to trim anything later on. Um, I'd prefer to have a little extra than have a little less, and then I can always trim it up. Just measuring out the uh, ends of these, this flap uh, to make sure that I, I really don't need all this material. So I'm going to trim this up to here first, and then this section, and then trim this out in this section here next. All right, I'm going to go ahead and radius these corners here um, with a quarter inch bit. Um, that way, if I need to trim out more, I can always uh, put in a larger bit, and then just kind of, kind of grind up into it a little bit um, to make it bigger if I need to. But I think this is actually a pretty good radius for this. Um, I'm going to start by drilling a pilot hole uh, with my number 40 drill bit here. actually turned out just about perfect uh, right on the marks that I had. All right next I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this tab. What I'm gonna do is trim it up basically straight up and down 90 degrees uh, from the edge here um, up until the corner um, adjacent to this uh, hole that I just drilled. Right, and then the next step is to take this piece of metal and put it into the sheet metal break here and just get a 90 degree bend right at the line that I've drawn uh, right up here. All right, so here's a couple of notes um, about this particular job. Um, my understanding is that the sheet metal that the Sonics is made out of is uh, aluminum 6061 uh, T6 is a very strong uh, metal. It's strong but also s sort of brittle, especially if you're bending uh, things. So if you have a thick piece of, uh, you know, 6061 T6, you know, say eighth of an inch or something like that, if you try to bend that at 90 degrees, it's actually going to get a stress crack in it because the, it just pulls too much of the metal apart and it's not designed for that kind of strength. 
Um, so you gotta be a little bit careful uh, when you're bending these things. Um, what I've done is, uh, so this is a, a piece of, uh, I think it's 6061, but it might be 30 out three um, aluminum. Um, and what I've done is I've, I've put a small uh, radius around this, uh, just put it through a, a belt sander um, and took a couple of passes at it to make a nice round edge on it. Um, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that when I bend this piece of sheet, it doesn't bend it like at a really tight seam. It's gonna have a bit of a rounded corner on it. So here I have my uh, sheet metal break. Um, you can see right where it's gonna bend, uh, right where this tips up. Um, so there is a line that you can see between these two parts that one lifts up, the other one stays steady. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my uh, sheet metal here. And the line that I've drawn across here, that's exactly where I want my, my bend to be. I'm gonna use a couple of uh, vice grips to hold this in place. Just a little bit behind that line right there. Both ends. This is going to mark the width that I want that away from the end of my die here. So it should be exactly 90 degrees up. Um, so I'm gonna scoot the plate slightly forward. So that lines up on both ends here. So it's just about perfect on that side too. So I'm gonna tighten this up a little. It keeps moving on me every time I touch it. So that should be good. I'm gonna put my handles in here. Get pretty much a perfect 90 degree bend. You might have to go slightly farther than 90 degrees on your pull to make sure that this ends up being right at 90 degrees. Um, and again, so that should, the die here should have enough of a, an edge on it to bend this around it so it doesn't have a really sharp bend on it. It should be slightly rounded. Um, so it should, it should be good. Let's pull it off and take a look and see how it looks. Pretty much right at the line that I drew. Um, you can see it's got a just a slight little uh, rounded edge on it. It's not super sharp here. Um, so that gives this radius enough room to bend around. Um, I, that actually turned out really well. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that. We'll go over to the, uh, the part now and uh, align this so that it, uh, we can draw our marks to see where we want the rest of this to be bent and cut and all that. All right, so obviously uh, this part here that we're building is gonna go onto this end cap. It has this compound cut line here. Um, if you'll notice, if I try to line this up right now, um, this angle right here, it's obviously not gonna work. This is supposed to go inside of there. It's not gonna fit because it's gonna be, you know, this corner right here is going to dig into the metal within. So we're actually gonna have to trim off just a smidge of material here. Um, so let me go ahead and do that really quick and then we can actually put this inside and start making our measurements around the outside. So I'm gonna start off by just doing a, a slight angle. I'm not gonna go uh, super aggressive with this. I can always cut off more later if I decide to. Um, that's not quite enough, so I'm gonna have to go a little bit farther. And all the while, I'm trying to make the end of my cut end right at this radius hole that we drilled earlier, um, just to make sure that you don't have any sharp spots on there. There we go. Now it's pretty much parallel with the bottom plate here. So let's stick this up against this. Try to put it in the center here. That looks pretty darn good. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, painter's tape right here to hold it in place. Um, and then I'm just gonna trace around the inside here with a pen so I can see exactly where those, where the edge of the uh, aileron is gonna be. Got some painter's tape here holding it. It wraps around onto the back side of this and it's actually just two pieces is holding it pretty secure. Um, if I try to move this, it stays pretty much right in the spot that I need it to be. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, take my pen on the back side of this and in particular, I'm gonna draw up here on this corner Top and bottom. Make the line all the way down here. So I need to do that on the top and on the bottom. If you look, uh, when I pull this out, you can see exactly where those angles need to be um, in order to make that all fit together uh, basically perfectly. 
Um, so what I'm gonna do next is kind of trim, give myself you know three quarters of an inch all the way around just like I did before. Um, and then use that as my trim line. So it should look something like this. Um, the inside lines here are gonna be my bend lines. The outside lines is where I'm gonna trim. Um, this back end over here, um, I'm gonna actually gonna trim off just a little bit inside of this line that I just made. Always when I cut, uh, I give myself a little bit of space on the edge here um, so that I can trim it in a little bit closer each time and uh, keep the line as straight as possible. Um, same as uh, I do on all the other parts that I've trimmed. Still not quite going all the way to the line yet. Uh, I'm gonna give myself just a little space so that I can come back one more time um, and just trip off a very thin amount. All right, even closer. Uh, one more trim here. mentioned this before in a different video, but make sure that when you're clipping, especially on this very last pass, that you don't actually close the tip, tin snips all the way, right where the snips meet. It actually will do a short little bend uh, right where they, where they close. But if you close it down to almost close, but not all the way, it doesn't seem to do that. Go ahead and move over to the uh, to the sheet metal brake and uh, do these last two sides. It's gonna be a little hard to do this the way we did before where we have the larger piece off to this end, uh, the non-tipping non end of the, of the uh, brake here. So I'm actually gonna put it this direction and uh, put my die over here. So let me start this one first because I wanna double check this so it's got kind of a wide line here. I'm pretty sure it's the outside line that I wanna do. Uh, but I'm going to do this one first, put it into place, and just verify that it's correct. All right, I think that's lined up about right. In this case, I'm only going to go up just a little tiny bit. So this angle should only be about 30 degrees. darn close. Just probably needs just a slightly larger bend. All right, let me try this one out. All right, so uh, after putting this into place, um, what I found is that um, this is this line is actually a little bit too far out so i'm actually gonna have to cut this in slightly not cut it but um bend it slightly farther in from there and i also noticed that this is a little too long so i'm just going to trim off a little bit of this on this end this is all just uh testing and fitting and trying until i'm happy with it Let me try and test fit this again really quick. All right, so this is test fit. Um, I have the bends that I've created already sitting inside of the part, inside of the aileron. Um, and you'll notice when I get this lined up, there's a slight gap here. Um, the line is a little too far uh, this direction. So I actually want to bend it uh, farther into the, to the main part here. I know that I need to go to that inside part of that uh, line uh, to make this all fit in there properly. Um, also this bend, um, so this bends about 30 degrees. 
which means that this, this one should be about 90 plus the additional 30. Um, so it should be uh, parallel to this mark here that we made earlier. Um, so it's gonna have to bend quite a bit farther um, than this one did and this one. Um, anyway, let's uh, go ahead and put it back on the brake and uh, we'll try and get that uh, done properly. All right, so this is going to be the most difficult bend here. Um, try and keep straight, um, and also to make sure that it kind of goes in the right spot. I'm not sure that it is, and we won't know until we've actually uh, made the bend, so here we go. Go, that's probably about 90 and um, then we need to go just a bit farther than that all right and at this point uh, this bend is running into our hefty uh, top plate so I'm going to remove that top plate just leave the inside plate in place all right and then we'll try and go the remainder of the way on this bend Make sure that we uh, are not happy with where this one's sitting right now. There we go. Trying to go the rest of the way here. Our, our bends. Um, everything looks all right. Uh, let me go fit it to see how it looks. All right, so as I'm trying to fit this in here, I'm noticing that this angle isn't quite uh, steep enough yet, so I'm going to use my uh, hand tool here to uh, just give it another little nudge uh, in that direction. This end's pretty good. This end still needs to be bent just a little bit farther. Still not quite there yet. That's uh, pretty close. Just a smidge more just down here in this bottom corner, which is a little hard to do to get in here with this tool. Um, try to bend this over just a smidge more. So you'll notice that I'm actually putting this on the outside. That's okay. Um, eventually it will go on the inside, but I'm just getting my angles correct here. Um, all right, so what I'm finding is that it, uh, it's pretty close here. Uh, this is slightly a little bit too long here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off just a little bit more of this. So this is uh, actually looking pretty darn close to what I'm hoping to, to see. Um, obviously once this gets uh, riveted in, this will pull this piece into it. This angle down here uh, is just about as perfect as you're gonna get. Um, this angle down here is just, just about right. Um, you'll notice if you look here kind of close, I don't know if I can get this in here or not, but there is a slight little indention here. Um, it's actually uh, inset slightly. That's actually not a huge deal. Uh, what I'll do is I'll drill and Clico one side before I pull this out and drill this and Clico it so that this all lines up the way it should. 
So again, on this uh, lower part here, I did trim this out at three quarters of an inch, um, both the top and the bottom, uh, and this front side here as well. But I really only needed a half inch on the bottom one here. Um, the top one does need to be at three quarters of an inch because the uh, inset and the instructions say to put it at a quarter inch from the end here, which ends up being a half an inch from the uh, from the edge of the ale run. Um, but on the bottom, we put them in at a quarter inch, um, so this needs to only be a half inch across. All right, uh, well, I've completed it. Um, this is actually the second one that I did. The first one, when I was trying to put it into place, um, I accidentally uh, inset it just a little bit more than I should have, and you can see that the uh, holes for the rivets are a little too close to the edge there. Um, so what I ended up doing is just uh, building a new one and not pushing it in quite as far, and uh, everything lines up, uh, I think, perfectly. It looks uh, pretty good and I'm happy with the way it turned out. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rivet it into place and call this piece complete. All right, well, there we go. We've got a completed end cap uh, attached to the aileron. Um, I think it turned out all right. Everything uh, seemed to line up and uh, I'm happy with that. That's gonna wrap up this video here. Uh, if you feel so inclined, please consider uh, subscribing and uh, following along as I build this Sonic Speed. Uh, we'll talk to you soon.